All right, welcome everyone to a new episode of the Fundamental Series. Um, it's been a while since I've had the whiteboard out. So before we jump into everything to do with rest periods, I'm just going to do a super quick recap of everything we've talked about so far. And if you'd like to skip that recap, uh, you can just jump to this timestamp over here. Uh, but very quickly, um, so far we've laid out our training ladder, and this goes up in order of importance. So forming the two legs of the ladder, we've got safety and enjoyment. Um, it's very important that you have a routine that you can run through safely and one that you enjoy on some level if you're going to be sustainable with it over the long term. And that forms the bottom rung of the ladder, which is sustainability. Uh, moving up from there, we have effort. So once you have a routine that's safe and enjoyable, now it's time to apply an appropriate amount of effort. Um, so you need to be exerting yourself enough to see some growth. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be taking every set to failure. You need to be within a reasonable proximity to failure. Once you apply some effort, it's time to apply progressive overload. Uh, so basically, over time, you need to be doing something more, uh, whether that's doing more weight, more reps, more sets, etc. Uh, that's really how the muscle grows in the first place. And you also want to keep prioritization in mind. Um, so you want to make sure that what is important to you is in fact what you're emphasizing with your training. Um, so your weak points, your goals, you need to prioritize them by putting them early in the workout or early in the training week, or perhaps by training them at a higher frequency. And then moving up one rung from there, we've got all the acute training variables. And this is all the stuff like volume, frequency, intensity that everybody talks about. Um, and we've gone through most of these now. So for volume, we said that something like 10 to 20 sets per body part per week is a sweet spot for most people to optimize their progress. And there is some newer literature suggesting that perhaps you can get away with more than 20 sets per week per body part for some body parts. Um, but I still feel like that's a little bit more speculative and we're going to go with this as the sweet spot for most people. When it comes to frequency, we've said that training each body part twice per week is better than only training each body part once per week. Frequencies of three or more may or may not be better. Um, if they allow you to perform more volume, then perhaps they could lead to more hypertrophy. But if volume is equal, the best we know is that two times a week is better than once a week. Then we also talked about load and intensity in the context of how many reps you should perform. Uh, so should you do high reps or low reps? And we said that really multiple or a wide range of rep zones have been shown to be effective for hypertrophy, uh, but they tend to have differential effects on recovery. So for practical purposes, we established 6 to 15 reps as the practical hypertrophy zone where you want to be doing most of your work. So here we said 6 to 15 reps for most. So something like 75% of your volume should be coming in that practical hypertrophy zone. And then when we talked about exercise selection, we talked about uh, how it's important to prioritize compound multi-joint movements over isolation movements. So the compound stuff, squats, presses, deadlifts should form the core of your routine. Um, and then you should use isolation exercises for some of the smaller assistance muscles, so things like biceps, calves, um, hamstrings, etc. And now we're going to get into rest periods. Uh, so this is even lower still on this order of priority over here, but that isn't to say it doesn't matter at all. Um, so before we get into some of the newer research on this, I just want to highlight what the old school train of thought is when it comes to rest periods. And you'll often see tables almost exactly like this in current strength and conditioning textbooks, even though I do think it is quite outdated at this point. Um, but the reasoning went that if you're training with the goal of increasing muscular size or hypertrophy, uh, you want to usually rest about one minute between sets. Uh, if your main goal is strength, uh, you'll want to rest a little bit longer, something like three to five minutes. And if your goal is muscular endurance, you won't want to rest too much at all between sets. So say keep it under something like half a minute. Now more recently, a lot of this uh, old dogma over here has come under scrutiny by more recent literature. And I'm just going to highlight two of these studies. Uh, so the first is from Schoenfeld and colleagues in 2016. And what they did was they split subjects up into two groups. So one group rested for one minute between sets and the other group rested for three minutes between sets. And they ran an eight week full body training program. And what they found at the end of the eight weeks was that there was better hypertrophy in the quads and the triceps 
in the three minute rest period group. Now there was better strength in terms of bench press one rep max and squat one rep max in the three minute group. And there was no difference in muscular endurance between the groups. Um, so this was really a major win for the longer rest period group. And then the next year in 2017, Grigix, or Grigic, I think I'm saying that right, uh, and colleagues did a meta-analysis where they took six studies investigating this, pooled the results together, and essentially found that resting for more than one minute between sets was better than resting for less than one minute between sets. So if you're gonna give this any merit over here, you should at least rest for more than one minute than really be rushing through your workout and rest for less than that. And their main rationale for that was that it allowed the subjects to perform more total volume, which I'll get to in a minute. And it would also depend on the specific exercise that you're doing and how hard you're exerting yourself on that exercise, which we'll also get to. Um, so given this new data over here, I really do think it's time that we have a paradigm shift when it comes to rest periods. And we really wanna to start to think about rest periods in terms of their function and how they can serve the rest of our training goals over here. Um, so I think that on my analysis, there are two main functions that rest periods have. Uh, the first is to allow for enough recovery between sets, and the other is for the sake of time management or training efficiency. Um, so let's just look at this using, using an example. Um, if your rest periods are too short, uh, basically, you're not going to be able to recover adequately between sets, and so you're not going to be able to push yourself as hard or move as much weight or do as many reps on subsequent work. Um, so just as a quick example, if I had three sets of five reps to do on the bench press, and I was going to put 300 pounds on the bar, um, I'd be able to go in there and get my first five reps no problem. Um, however, if I was only to rest, let's say, one minute between my first set and my second set, there's no way I'd be able to get five reps again for my second set with 300 pounds. I might get maybe two or three reps. And so by having too short of a rest period, the total amount of work that I'm able to do is being diminished. And we know that volume actually ranks pretty highly over here when it comes to priority. Now, on the other hand, let's say you had rest periods that were too long. Um, your workout may begin to feel dragged out. Uh, you might start to sort of lose steam or energy as the session gets really long. And so I think that other than recovery, the other main function of rest periods is to allow you to manage your time in the gym so you're not spending all day in there. Um, so with that uh, basic conceptual landmark stuff out of the way, uh, now I'm going to dig into some specific programming examples. Okay, so up next we're going to talk about some of the practical stuff. So how long should you actually rest between sets? And I've split this up according to type of exercise. And we're going to talk about a few potential exceptions. Um, so for the most part, between heavy compound exercises that are going to require a large amount of muscle mass get involved and typically have a higher recovery cost, you're going to want to rest for slightly longer. Um, so for these, I say three to five minutes. And then for isolation exercises that usually have a lower rec recovery cost and utilize smaller muscles, I'm gonna say one to two minutes for these. And whether you rest three minutes or five minutes will depend on you know, the specific exercise you're doing. Um, so exercises like say squats and deadlifts are gonna be a little bit more damaging, we'll say, than an exercise like a barbell row, even though it is a heavy compound. Um, so for something like a row, you might want three minutes, something like a heavy squat, you might want five minutes. And then it also depends on just how heavy you're going. So if you're doing you know, a really heavy triple, just a set of three reps on the squat, you're probably going to want to rest you know, at least five minutes. Um, but if you're doing something that isn't quite as heavy, if you're doing some speed work, for example, uh, then you might not want to rest quite as long. Um, so there's going to be some individual discretion on that, but that's a good general ballpark. And I don't think that you need to actually time your rest intervals between sets as long as you're somewhere in this range and you're being careful and monitoring that, uh, roughly speaking, then you're good. Um, when it comes to isolation exercises, again, one to two minutes can depend on what you want the pace of your workout to be. So if you're trying to get in and out of the gym a little bit more quickly, you might want to go somewhere closer to one minute. If you've got time to kill and you enjoy training and you want to make sure you're fully recovered, then 
You can go as high as two minutes, but I probably wouldn't recommend going higher than that because like I said earlier, it can just slow down the pace of the workout needlessly. You can get distracted, start spending too much time on your phone, and then the pace of your workout is just not quite as productive. So those are my recommendations there. Uh, very rarely, if at all, will I recommend resting for less than one minute between sets. Uh, but there are a few exceptions. So in the case of separated supersets, so supersets where you're training antagonistic muscle groups, so let's say uh, doing a lat pull down supersetted with a dumbbell fly, you're gonna be training the back, and then while the back is recovering, uh, you're gonna be training the chest. And so assuming each set takes about a minute to perform, uh, you're effectively giving your chest rest time while you're training your back and vice versa. Uh, but I don't necessarily recommend this in all cases, only if people are really pushed on time. Um, and then it can potentially be useful as an intensity technique. Um, so if you're, let's say, just trying to really blast the muscle or uh, really get a crazy pump, um, then I could see you know, having those shorter rest periods could help force more blood into the muscle. Uh, but I see this more so as an advanced technique and something that should be done more so for fun rather than something that's like fundamentally driving progress forward. Um, when, it comes to, when it comes to fat burning, uh, I don't think I'd recommend shortening your rest intervals too much. Um, even though it may make you sweat a little bit more, it may make it seem like you're working harder and burning more calories. Uh, in reality, the differences in caloric burn between say a 15 or 20 second rest period and a one to two minute rest period is gonna be really small. And I think that we should be looking at our training program as a vehicle to drive muscle gain. And we wanna think about our diet and cardio routines as tools for uh, causing fat loss. So I don't really like structuring a training program in a way that's centered toward increasing uh, fat burning. I think that that kind of has it backwards. Um, so that doesn't really come very highly recommended from me. Um, so anyway, those are my practical recommendations for rest periods. And I think I'm going to leave it at that for this video. Um, if you guys found it informative, uh, please leave me a thumbs up. Uh, if you happen to be new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And in the next video, we're going to talk about tempo. So how fast should you lift the weights? How fast should you move them up? How fast should you bring them back down? And so make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned for that video. And I'll see you guys all here in the next one.